Check. Check. Can you hear me now? Hey, everybody. It's Chris here in the media studios for your Saturday night thing, your devotion for this evening. Um, you pay no attention to the mess behind me or the one right here. I can see uh, some folks joining us. I'm looking over here at my computer screen. That's what is going on when I turn my head that way. Um, <clears throat> so welcome. It's good to be with you all. So two days after my 50th birthday, I took part in a Tough Mudder challenge. And the Tough Mudder challenge is a 10 to 11 mile run and obstacle course. And it's an obstacle course that's messy. It's intentionally messy. It features water, ropes, monkey bars, ice, um, haystacks, electricity, vertical walls, um, and lots and lots and lots of mud. Um, now, I'm not a runner, and so this was a particular challenge for me, and I don't have a powerful upper body, and so this isn't the kind of thing that I do a lot of. But my younger brother invited me to join his Tough Mudder team, and the Big Brother code just simply does not allow that kind of a challenge to go, to go unanswered. So, so, yeah, I joined my, brother's, my younger brother's... Uh, Tough Mudder team, and we went to, to a Tough Mudder event that was held in Missouri uh, a couple years ago. And so um, by, the time, by the time one crosses the finish line at a, at a Tough Mudder challenge, you will have lost count pretty much of, of how many pools and, and pits of mud that you've waded or, or swam through or run through or crawled through. Uh, you will have lost count of how many different versions of, of walls uh, you've gotten yourself up and over and how many different ways you've done, done those. And you will have lost count of how many things that you've just simply fallen off of. Uh, you lose your grip, you, you, you slip and you slide, and you fall off of stuff, usually into a pool of mud. But it's a, but it's a couple hours of constant, physical, filthy challenge. One of the 20 or so obstacles uh, the, that we encountered, and it was fairly early, actually, in the, in the event, is called Everest 2.0. Everest after the mountain and it starts as a horizontal floor but then curves up and becomes a vertical wall and it's 15 feet high and with a with a running start you aim to surmount it to get up over the top but you know there's no real way to run all the way up and there are no handholds built into it, and it's slippery from the mud that's been smeared on it, all over it by, by the people who have gone before you. And, and over the course of the day, though, a few thousand people are going to have to find their way up and over this thing. Well, as, as we approached it, uh, our team that was working together, running together, uh, this particular obstacle, I wondered what to do because I'd never been faced with anything like this. I haven't done anything like this. I do a lot of mountain bike racing, but but that doesn't prepare you for this. Um, so, but my brother who was running behind me said, just keep running. Just keep running. And so I did. I ran straight at the wall and up the slope. And, and, and I ran up that slope, up, uh, and I ran up where it was, it was horizontal, and it started to curve upward, and I ran as far as I could up that slope until just when I started to slide backwards, and I gave one last, one last surge up, and I, and I stuck out my hands. I reached as hard as I could, as high as I could. 
and my hands were caught by another set of hands reaching down from above. And they grabbed me, and I kept my legs running against that vertical wall while those hands from above held my arms, and they pulled, they pulled as hard as they could to haul me up to the top. And you know, if you want to turn this spiritual, it's not, it's not too hard to insert your own, your own faith-based metaphor here uh, of hands from above pulling a person up, right? But you see, the thing about the Tough Mudder challenge is that it's not a race. Um, it's a challenge. It's long and it's hard. And while some people keep a stopwatch running uh, from start to finish and they try to find a way to quantify that experience, there's no official event clock. And there are no prizes for finishing it faster than anyone else. There's no point system to determine who did it best. And in fact, there's nothing but your own honor to keep you from bypassing the challenges completely and taking shortcuts on the course. But the point of the Tough Mudder is for everyone on the course to get each other to the finish line. And so that's how it went, obstacle after obstacle. You know, I'd be standing chest deep in a, in a pit of mud beside a, beside a slimy hill that I got to figure out how to get over. And then someone would show me their hands and they'd link their, their, their fingers together and they'd, they'd put their hands down here and they'd say, here, put your foot in here and I'll give you a boost up. And they would, right? And then so I'd, so I'd launch myself at the, at the hill with their help. And then another set of hands would grab and push my butt from, from below. And from above, again, someone would reach down and pull me up, and pull me up. And you know what, once I was on top, now it was my job to turn around and offer my hands down to the people who were coming up behind me, to the people who were reaching up just like I just did. And you know what, I think about those hands. There were, there were thousands of them in the course of that day, of that event. There were, there were fat hands, there were skinny hands, there were girl hands, there were, there were guy hands, there were soft hands, there were hard hands. There were probably black hands, Asian hands, Latino hands, white hands, right? But the race and the ethnicity of the hands wasn't really an issue because we were all the same color of of brownish, grayish mud. There were probably poor hands. There were probably prosperous hands. There were probably liberal hands. There were probably conservative hands. You know, there is no way to judge the, the economic or social status of the hands. There was no way to judge the political leanings of the hands. Uh, or the social status, right? The, the gender preference of the hands was indistinguishable. There were probably gay hands and straight hands. I don't know. I didn't think to ask. I didn't think to ask because here's the thing. The usual categories that we sort ourselves into really aren't important when the task at hand is to lift each other up. And that's what I like the most about the Tough Mudder Challenge. You know, they tell you right up front that it's, that it's going to be hard. You're going to run a long way, and you're going you're gonna to do a lot of heavy lifting of, of yourself and of other people. And, you know, while it certainly is your goal to cross the finish line in decent shape, we're all in it together. All of us who are out on the course at the same time are in it together. All of us in the country are in it together. All of us who are on the earth at the same time, we're in this together. There's a need for each of us to help and to be helped. The only way to get past many of the obstacles is to reach a handout for, for help. And the only right thing to do is to offer a hand to the next person behind, right? And there's, there's, there is a beauty, a certain beauty, a real beauty in, in that collective 
overcoming. And you might even begin to, to wonder and to think about whether, uh, whether it's more satisfied to, 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 uh, to be pulled up or, or to pull someone else. So, you know, when we think and, and when we work together, when we accept the hands that are offered and offer the hands that we're able, there are very few obstacles that we as a human race are not going to be able to overcome. So that's what I have for you tonight. Thanks for, thanks for joining me tonight for these few minutes. Um, join us for the live stream tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be a good one. It's Trinity Sunday. Let me look here on the worship page at aboutfirst.com, which is live. You can go there and check it out anytime you want. Um, what are we going to do tomorrow? It's Trinity Sunday. We're going to sing a couple great hymns of the church. We're going to recognize those who have completed the lay servant class. We're going to get a sneak peek at the next teaching series, which begins next week, um, based on the Ten Commandments, it's called Words of Life. And tomorrow we're going to hear a, a Trinity Sunday message from Pastor Scott. And we're going to share in, uh, in a ritual that's not really communion, but it's communion-based. It's the communion of empty hands. We did it last month as well. Uh, because the first Sunday of the month is typically our communion Sunday, but that's tough to do when we can't be together to share in the elements. And so we'll have a short liturgy for that. Um, so we hope you join you. Uh, hope you join us. I uh, hope to see you on the live stream tomorrow morning. Um, but until then, have a great night. Um, be safe. Be healthy. Good night.